Every spring we rent a dump trailer and go buy tons of yards of compost to amend our garden with. We also get some composted cow manure and we just shovel it in the wheelbarrows and dump it in the garden and spread it all out. This was actually last year's video footage. I never got around to editing it, but this year we actually did not have to add any compost because we've been making our own. So last year was the last year that we actually had to add all this compost. Around the sides of the garden, I wanted to have a weed barrier. So I got lots of large cardboard boxes, mostly from Ikea. We drove around the neighborhood to get that because they're just such really big pieces. I covered all the walkways around the garden and the sides along the edge and then I just raked that uh, manure and compost right over that and that has been really great in keeping the weeds down. Once we got all of the cardboard down and I also had some plastic to kill some of the weeds that were encroaching into the garden on the side, we got some um, wood chips. This was from our local city um, nursery area and we just dumped it right here and we scooped it all along. Now this is not something I want in my garden, but it was really great to pile over the cardboard to keep the weeds down. I don't have any after video footage of what it looks like when I was finished putting this all around the edge of the garden and the walkways, but it has held up really well the last year and it's just been really great to keep the weeds down. So fast forward and this is our garden now this spring for 2024. Ignore the irrigation, it's a little out of whack right now. We have some garlic that's already been growing that I planted last fall. I've got a pile of leaves I need to take care of here. And then this is our greenhouse. We've been growing some lettuce in there all winter long. It's just doing really well. Um, check out the video link down below if you wanna see how I put this together. So like I said, we've been working on making our own compost and we had it in a bin and we just dumped it over here on this side of the garden and covered it with a tarp just for the springtime when the sun beats down on it kind of helps break it down a little bit faster and as you can see it's really nice compost it's not a hundred percent composted um, as you can see a little bit deeper down but i'm just going to do a thin layer all on the top so how you know you have really good soil is you get mushrooms growing out of it that's one of the ways you can tell along with earthworms so my other pile over here is composted cow manure mixed with a bunch of wood chips that we got last year. We had it over in our chicken area and they've been scratching through it and it's composted down beautifully. I'm gonna mix each of these both into my wheelbarrow and then I'm going to spread it around a thin layer throughout the entire garden. Now we don't till it in or anything because we do a no-till garden method here, but those nutrients will leach down into the soil as it rains and over time. So I actually did things a little bit backwards here. I put out my garden stakes as you saw me trip over them. Before I went ahead and lined all this up, I had strings marking all my rows. So I kind of had to work around those. So in hindsight, I should have done this first before I marked all of my rows. But I was able to just work around that. So I'm gonna show you here in a minute how I measure out all of my uh, garden rows. But as you can see, this is really nice brown rich soil that we're just putting right on top of the dirt and compost that we had there last year. My garden is about 60 feet long and all of my rows are two feet apart. So I just put some stakes in and I found some old yarn that I had and I was just measuring out every two feet, 24 inches, and I would put a stake down and just tie some yarn so that way I have a nice straight row and know exactly where I'm supposed to plant and where my irrigation line is supposed to go. This just helps keep everything nice and uniform. And then after I plant stuff and it starts growing up, then I'll go ahead and remove the string because I don't really need that there. I just need it to know where I've got stuff planted so everything is evenly spaced. So this gives me about 30 rows that I can plant. Now this section over here is only about 15 feet wide because we've got a walkway there. A little bit further down past where the greenhouse is, that area is about 20 feet wide. So I can really plant a lot of stuff and make the most use of the space in this garden in our small backyard.
it is mid-April and I can go ahead and start getting my onions planted. So I'm just gonna take some of this bone meal, which is high in phosphorus, it's slow release, mix it up with the composted manure, which is very high in nitrogen. And on my rows where I'm going to be planting my onions, I'm just going to put it right down the center of that row. I'm not spreading this over the whole garden, just where my onions are going to be. This is gonna make them very happy for the whole season. Then I'm gonna go through and just kind of lightly mix it in with my hands along the row. This will be enough to feed the onions for the whole growing season. They don't really require a lot of nutrients if you just add to the, this to the soil. I buy my onions in bunches like this from our local feed store. This year I got Walla Walla as well as the Candy Apple Red, which are my favorite red onions. So I just gently separate them from the bunches and I put them into the ground staggered about six inches apart. You don't have to plant them super deep. You just wanna make sure the roots are covered as well as a little bit of the bottom bulb because you don't wanna plant them too deep. I've tried starting onions from seeds, but I've never really had success with that. So I just like to buy these little onion starts from our local feed store because one, they are already started and ready to go outside in the middle of April. And also they are best suited for our area because depending on the area that you live in, you can either have long day or short day onions. So that's why I like to get them locally because I know they're going to grow well in our area. I did one full row of the Walla Walla and one and a half rows of the Candy Apple Red. Next, I'm going to give them a good water. Before we turn our irrigation on, I have to go through it and water things. It's still a little bit too cold at night to turn our irrigation on, so each day I'll just come out and water the onions. Next it's time to plant some carrots. Now carrot seeds are very tiny and I'm gonna go through and just kind of rake some of this mulchy stuff out of the way so I can get down to the fine soil. And I'm gonna heavily sprinkle my carrot seeds and then I'll worry about thinning them and spacing them out later. I like to plant a spring crop of carrots for a summer harvest and then in the summer I plant another crop to get a fall harvest. Once I've got all of the seeds down in there I'm going to take some of this fine soil and lightly sprinkle it over to just barely cover these seeds. Carrot seeds require constant moisture to be able to germinate and they do take a while. We live in such a dry area that I can water and then just a short time later it is completely dry. So what I do is what I call and other people call a carrot board. So I just have a two by six here that I just kind of prop up a little bit so it's not sitting on the ground. But it's basically going to cover up my little carrot seeds and then every time I water it I just put that board back on there and then once this seeds have germinated then I can remove my board. This just helps keep that moisture in and also the ground from getting too hot. Now we got to tackle this pile of leaves here. I had intended on spreading this throughout the garden in the fall but instead we just kind of dumped it here. So I was going to spread it out but then I changed my mind and decided to go ahead and just move it off to the side because I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted this pile to go. Leaves often attract the little roly-poly bugs, which can be good because they can break stuff down, but if you have too many of them in your garden, then they can start eating your plants. So I don't really wanna have this all over the garden right now. I think I'm just gonna let it compost over here, and then in the fall, it makes a great ground coverage for your strawberries and garlic. And look at this little worm I found in here. This is a sign of really good, healthy soil. Just a few weeks after I planted this stuff, we woke up on May 5th getting dumped with snow. I cannot believe it. I hope all of my onions and garlic survives. It should because these are pretty cold hardy. That is why we wait till after Mother's Day to get our cold sensitive stuff like tomatoes and peppers planted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.